Hey everybody, Matt from Eastwood. Welcome to another live demo and happy National Shrimp Day for you guys that don't know. Uh, today we're doing a little tech demo from uh, last time. Uh, so if you guys haven't uh, watched the last one, what we're going to do is show you how to make a motor, uh, motorcycle, like a bobber or cafe racer style motorcycle fender. So this is one that I made uh, to use for demonstration. We polished this one out so it looks uh, pretty nice. But we're going to take you to close to this uh, finish here today in the second part. Uh, for any of you guys that want to ask questions, if you haven't watched one of these before, I'd like it to be interactive. So we have Scott, our lead tech over here. Yep, so make sure if you have any questions, put them on Facebook, put them on YouTube. I'll be able to answer them or I can always shoot them over to Matt. So let's see how you want to finish this fender up. So, um, yeah, if you have, I'm going to be making a lot of noise today. So uh, definitely shoot Scott some questions and I'll stop in between and, and answer them for you guys. Um, so last time, just to kind of catch you guys up in a real short uh, clip here, we're going to throw one up. Uh, this is what we did last time. That was the flat piece of metal that we started with. And I took that in the sandbag and hammered it out in the sandbag with our teardrop mallets to give it the shape and just roughed it in. We went through a few rounds of hammering. It looked pretty, pretty rough when you first start out. You can see all those ripples and what we did was we worked and uh, tuck shrink those, uh, the ripples out to shrink that into, uh, into itself. And we got the real big ones out by doing that. And then after that, we put it in the, uh, the shrinker stretchers. So that's just me finishing it. And, uh, and I smoothed it a little bit in the English wheel just to kind of get the piece under control a little bit. And you can see it's starting to come in there, and that's uh, getting a little smoother there, just so I could check my shape as we were going. And rolling it in the wheel a little more. And then the shrinker stretcher. So I put in the shrinker stretcher then to, uh, to just pull in some of the smaller tucks um, and also kind of show you guys the, the, the process, um, a little bit of the process. So we were hammering out the, the heavy shrinks um, by hand and I used the shrinker stretcher to pull in the other ones and that's where it got us to a point where we were basically, uh, the piece was fairly flat but it had the crown in it that we needed. Um, and then after that, I had a little bit of work to do in between the broadcast where I wanted to, uh, to get the panel to actually get the curve that we wanted to it. So what I did is I then hammered it out a little more to put a little more crown into the piece. Um, so after we smoothed it, I could tell it needed a little more crown. So I worked it in there, which uh, created a little bit more tucks. But what I did was I trimmed off some of the excess uh, material because we were getting into a point where we were, we were actually shrinking all of the uh, excess material that we didn't need. So I shrunk that down after uh, shrink, uh, I'm sorry, I cut that down after shrinking it and hammering it and here's where we're at. So the piece is, uh, it's cut down the shape, it's a little closer in size here and it's still got, you know, see, you can still see it's a little rough in here. We, we, um, we need to smooth this out quite a bit and I need to kind of blend all of this, all the hammer marks together. So a uh, good question we got last time is can you do uh, the smoothing process on the English wheel or the planishing hammer? Um, the answer is yes, you can do it on both of those. But the problem is, is with the English wheel, you need to have a wheel. The bottom wheel needs to be sharp enough that you can actually fit it into the shape that you're, that you're smoothing. Uh, if it does not and you try to force it, it's going to run lines into your workpiece and, and uh, create a lot of work or possibly wreck the piece, which you don't want to do. Um, because the wheel is so wide, that, that causes a problem. So what I like to do and also to speed things up is go over to the planishing hammer here. So the planishing hammer um, will allow us to smooth in the piece. Uh, what it does is it has a, a pneumatic air hammer here on the top and it has a die in the bottom. And I'll pull these. Uh, actually, Jake, you want to get in? I'll, I'll put three of these on the table here. I don't know if you're able to get in there to rather than me trying to hold them. So we have the three, three dies that come with our planishing hammer here that you can see and they have a different crown in each one. And what, what you'll, the biggest thing I'm trying to, to talk about here is they're much smaller than the width of, an, of the lower wheel and the English wheel. So as you get into a smaller area we can work a tighter area. We don't have to worry about running into the, uh, into the edges of the panel so we can use that. So I'm going to pick the one that has the most radius here. We have a number one. Um, a number two and a number three. I'm going to use the number one 
Uh, it's the steepest one that we offer. So we'll throw that in. Uh, oops. So this has a little quick release here on the planishing hammer to let you get your, uh, your piece in and out. So I'm going to turn it up when we want to put the piece in and work it. This thing makes a lot of racket. Um, if you have neighbors that you don't like or that complain about your noisy exhaust on your car, they're going to really dislike this. But the tool is really quick. Um, it moves a lot of metal. You can, you can uh, stretch metal with this. You can also um, you can smooth metal with it. So what I've done is I turned the air pressure down on the planishing hammer just a little bit. Um, it has an adjustment up top here, but I turned it down a little bit so I was just a little closer um, in air pressure and then I can dial it in on the top here. So what I've done is I've turned it down to almost the lowest setting so that we're not stretching the metal so much since we're doing aluminum. Um, it's very easy to stretch. So we want the pressure to be low and we want to just more be smoothing rather than stretching. I may turn it up at a later point just to raise the center, but for right now we're just going to try and smooth it. So I'm going to put my earmuffs on here so I don't kill my hearing worse than it is. Um, and you can see, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to show you guys before I start working, you can see how lumpy this is here on the piece. So you can just catch the light and you can really see how many dents and low spots and high spots there is in it. So I'm going to put it in here. So get it to want it and we're going to start working it. Oops, my bad. And Joe, if you want to get a close in here, if you don't mind, uh, you can really see what I'm pushing in and out on the piece. You'll see it go from uh, being real wavy and, and uh, from it having all these dents in it to it'll start coming up with almost to a polished finish. All right. So you can see pretty quickly in there, we're getting a pretty smooth finish on this section here. So we can manipulate it by hand a little bit to get it where we want it. Um, but what I'm doing is smoothing that out. I was also working these edges here uh, the other way in the panel because there was a little bit of a ridge in the panel where we were shrinking and the shrink stopped. It creates a hard line in the panel. So what I'm doing is I was kind of uh, smoothing in that area. And you want to stay away from those sh that shrink area there. Uh, because if we start hitting on that, you may stretch the metal again if you sit there too long, which will make the panel open up and uh, take the shape away. So we're just trying to smooth it out. So you can see this front section here is coming along pretty good. Any questions, Scott, before I start making noise again? No, we're good right now. They're, okay. they're all tuned in to the, to the work getting done. Sweet. All right, I'm going to make some more noise.
So there we are with the uh, with the top here. You can start really seeing the I'm waiting for you to come in here. There we go. Now we're in on me. There we go. So we're waiting. For, you can start to see what I'm trying to show you guys is you can see the reflection of the lights above us. So you can see they're starting to become smooth. They're not as broken. I mean, they still are a little bit, but you don't want to see like a a funhouse mirror effect too much. You want to see uh, a nice reflection, which is what we're starting to get here. So this uh, section down in here, I didn't touch yet, so it's still all it's still all lumpy and wavy. So I'm going to go in there and work that section. Make sure you send Scott any questions. If you have questions about uh, what we're doing today. Yeah, we have a good one right now. Sure. If you want to take a quick break yep. for making a racket. Yeah. Um, so uh, Cooper's Brothers Racing asks, you know, why would you choose this over an English wheel? Uh, so, um, what, that's a good question. So for the, um, for the English wheel, uh, as mentioned, uh, some of the wheels are not as sharp. So walk here, there you go. Now you can see me. So the, um, the English wheel, uh, depending on how narrow of a wheel you have. So if you have a really high crown wheel, uh, you would be able to, uh, do the same thing on an English wheel. It might take a little longer. Um, but the big problem is, especially on something that's, uh, that's small like this, but has a pretty heavy crown or shape to it, is that the, wheel, the English wheel, the bottom wheels, if you don't have a sharp enough one, they're going to run on the edges and it's going to actually create lines in the piece instead of smoothing it out. Uh, I used the English wheel early on in the process when the panel wasn't uh, as curved to just planish it out a little bit. Um, but now that we're into a heavier shape, uh, our lower wheels would end up hitting on both sides. So if you have a real, real high crown, narrower wheel, um, you could get away with doing this. Um, the process does take a little bit longer with the English wheel because you have to just roll, tighten a little bit, roll. And uh, with the planishing hammer, it's nice. You can just buzz along. And because the dies are so small, I can get into tight areas on the corners here and things like that that might be hard to do with the English wheel. So that's a good question. Any other ones, Scott? Nope, we're good to go back to work cool. again. Awesome. I'm going to make more noise. So we're getting there on the piece here. Um, it's getting a lot smoother. We'll see if Joe can get in there. 
you can see the lights are kind of starting to get a little better. You can see it's not all waffled anymore, um, especially the center section is getting fairly nice. Now, there, when, if you go on the surface, there is little tiny, tiny little spots basically where it's hitting over and over again. Um, those you can easily sand out um, or you could smooth out some more um, with a slapper, but those are very, very minimal. It's extremely easy to take some sandpaper, which we'll show you in a little bit, um, to take care of those. Uh, any other questions before I tune this up a little more? No, we're good right now. All right, I'm gonna try and work a little quicker here. So now uh, we got it going pretty good. It's got a little, I can tune that up a little bit by hand there. Um, but uh, what I'm finding is I'm still a little flat here in the center. Um, it's, it's probably hard to tell here, but I'd like a little bit more crown. It's pretty good at the ends, but right here in the center, I think it needs a little more crown, just a little bit. So when I'm saying crown, I mean the side to side like this. I want a little more in the center here because it's kind of sharp here and it flattens out and then gets sharp again. So what I could do is turn the, the, this up a little bit and I could, I could put it just in that area there where we were, where I want it to be, and turn it up and stretch it a little bit.
go. It's getting a little better. So now we kind of, I'm pretty close to the shape I want here. Um, as far as, you can see, really see the reflections coming out now. So, oh, you see the Eastwood logo there. Look at that. Fancy. That's on the floor here. So you can start, see that's starting to come out. The reflection isn't bent too much. Uh, if you get to an area where it starts to bend, um, then you know you probably have a spot that needs to be addressed. So that's getting pretty close there. I raised up that center by stretching it. You could do it with the, uh, you could do it with the hammer as well if you wanted in the sandbag again and then go back in. But I just wanted to raise it just a little bit. And what you might have noticed is I was going really slow in those areas, letting it stretch that area up with a little bit higher pressure. And then I came back and worked it quicker uh, at the ends just so I could blend the two areas together. So we're just kind of flowing everything together. So that's why I was working it the way that I did. So now I can turn the pressure down just a little bit and uh, just blend a little bit more and then we should be ready to, uh, to put some strengthening in it. Any questions? Sure. Uh, Scott asks if you need to change out the dies when going from steel to aluminum. Uh, good, good question. Um, uh, you do not need to change out the dies. Uh, they're all the same. Basically, they're, they're steel dies, um, so there's no real issue there. Uh, the biggest thing is just your pressure. Um, it takes, obviously, a lot less force to stretch aluminum because it's softer, so you need to run at a lower air pressure when you're planishing. Um, but you can use the same dies. That doesn't matter. Really, the only thing that matters is you want to match your die as close as you can it, with the radius of the die to what you're actually working on. Same with the English wheel. Um, so um, with a sharp die like that, I'm able to get in these corners here, working away and making this line kind of here, here from where, where we were uh, shrinking. But yeah, it's a good one. Any other ones? Good. Cool. Again, guys, throw some questions out to Scott. He'll answer them. He'll throw them to me. And We'll answer them for you guys. So I'm going to turn this, down. turn this down just a little bit. Are uh, 
pretty close there. Um, I could spend, you could spend as much time as you want depending on how far you want to go on the piece. Um, I'm just kind of bending these corners so they all kind of match. Um, but what we have here is we have a nice, smooth, there we go, this way, there. So, um, I could stick my hand above this, that's one way I check it. You can see your reflection is coming in pretty good on that. So we're, we're getting pretty, pretty nice and smooth there. I mean, when you start seeing reflection and it's not bent really bad, you know you're getting pretty close there and the lights are showing up real nice. So this is pretty smooth. Again, I could spend a little more time on it uh, if I wanted to, to get it polished like we had there. I spent a little more time um, with the planishing hammer to get it there. Uh, but for what we're doing today, I just want to show you uh, the different process. So I'm going to stop here as far as smoothing it goes and we're going to show you about rolling a, a strengthening step in it. Uh, any other questions we have, Scott? No, I don't have any questions, but I figured I'd also let anyone know if your, you, or your Facebook's still up, uh, and I'm not answering anything, I do apologize. Mine's going down. I'm trying frantically to get that one back up. So if you're on there, that's why we're not getting it answered. If you can hop over to YouTube, certainly feel free to do that as well so we can get anything answered for you. All right, so um, what I'm going to do next here is um, I'm going to put uh, a strengthening bead in this. So... This one here that I already did, show you guys. Let me get this for Joe. Um, there you go. So you can see there's like a step in this that makes the, uh, the center look to actually kind of like a step down. A um, couple of reasons for that. So it looks cool, obviously. Um, but what it, it does is we, we need some kind of strength to the panel um, because this one here, I could just take this and fold it in half if I pushed in real hard and wrecked the panel. I could just push in, fold it in half because there's not a lot of strength in these, these, corner, these edges here. Um, it has some strength, but if it was pushed in, it would, it would fold. And if you're mounting this uh, on your bike and from vibrations and things, it, it, could, it could possibly twist. So uh, for the look cool, uh, you can add a bead or something to it around the edge. What I'm doing is putting a little step bead. So I'm just gonna do real quick just by hand show you guys the process. So I'm just going to trace a line here. I learned this little trick from Mr. Gene Winfield. And if you guys are interested in metal shaping class with Gene, we're doing one here at the Eastwood headquarters um, next Saturday, actually. And I think we got a couple spots open in the class. So if you guys uh, want to join in, there's definitely spots available. And that's in our Pottstown, Pennsylvania store. Um, Gene will be doing a two-day class for everybody. It's definitely worth it if you, uh, if you want to learn about metal shaping, fabrication, or just uh, learn the right way to build a traditional hot rod or custom. Gene was the guy that was there and doing a lot of it, so he'll tell you. Yeah, it's May 20th and 21st. Yes. Um, so we'll be, we'll be doing a class. I'll also be there with Gene running and grabbing him tools and giving him some relief when he wants yeah, it's Somebody to hammer for him. It's a full day class, so it's not something where you're going to be in for just an hour. So that's eight o'clock till five o'clock. So he's giving you the full day, both days, so you get a lot of knowledge. Yeah, that's great. All right, Scott, you're going to have to get away from your fans, unfortunately, and I think we're going to roll a bead here mm -hmm. or a step. Let's do so that. what we have, um, we'll get Joe to get in while Scott's getting in place. Um, we have our step dies, so we have our forming kit for our standard economy bead roller. Um, this fits any bead roller that has a similar shaft um, that's, a, that's a hand crank bead roller they'll all kind of fit. So what I have is our step die set here that comes in our forming kit. Um, and that has two dies that each have a step in them and you put them together to kind of match like a puzzle piece. And what that does is it presses down out here on the piece. So we're going to be running my line right on that outer part. So so if, we're, if we were just starting on the edge of a panel, um, we could just run it right in, but because we're actually starting on a part in the center, I got to crank this down. So you can do it in multiple passes if you'd like. Um, you can do it in one pass. Just want to try not to bottom the dies out, which I sometimes tend to do. Get a little antsy. All right. Let's go back a little bit. There we go. 
So we're going to roll and I'm going to use my patented pirate eye technique. And uh, I'm giving a little twist to the panel to help it kind of step. And Scott's just rolling nice and slow. He's done this a couple times too. Bead roller. Yes, yeah, <laughs> this is our pirate themed portion. Arr. I don't know why this eye thing worked for me. When we did the pilot house truck videos, I did uh we did the running boards on my truck. And we did the bedsides, and those were real long beads. And I got in the habit, I don't know why, doing that. And here I am. Years later. So you can see it's forming it in there. I can already tell it's giving it a ton of strength. Um, and I'm just putting a little twist in it to kind of help it roll. Now coming around this corner is a little more difficult because we're kind of, the piece has some shape to it and we're turning a corner. This is where Scott has to slow down. You're doing pretty good actually. I'll use, so I got to roll it actually down and the piece is kind of forming with you as you're doing this. So we're getting there. Good. And around that corner. And I'll let the piece kind of form. Like I said, I'm always kind of pushing up on the piece a little bit to kind of help it uh, form that die, or I mean that step. Getting there. And you can do this in floor pans. You can do it in all sorts of stuff. This is my favorite die because it creates a step and depending how you lay the panel out or you roll the bead, um, you can create a really neat look in the panel. In this instance, we're trying to almost make the center look like it's pressed in. Which is pretty cool. Do, do, do. Man, you're pretty good at this, Scott. <laughs> got a lot of practice. Yeah. So we got, uh, the key with, with rolling this is definitely when you have a helper is, is smooth and steady. You don't want somebody that's stopping part of the way through. Um, I've seen some guys modify their bead rollers and put like big car steering wheels on them, like a 50s car steering wheel or even something from a semi. It allows you to kind of continuously turn the wheel without stopping. If you have problems with that, you can also work it by yourself a little easier. All right. Good. So here in the corners, you got to... My line there wasn't quite... Straight, so I'm just going to use my imagination and connect the dots. And blame the guy who drew the line on. Yeah. Who was that sucker? A beginner. All right. So we're coming around. Now the key here is to try, if you can, and marry up your lines here. I get them darn close so that they'll and a marry in place. All right, do you want to actually go backwards just a little bit? There you go, all right, good. So I had to go backwards just a little bit. It kind of adjusted my line and helped me uh, blend the two of them together. You can use a little hammer and dolly action to get them to match up even better. So now what I can do is I'm just gonna give these edges a little tweaking here. But, getting a pretty good finish there. You really start seeing the reflection in that piece. So you can work it a little bit from here. So I still think, if I was building this for something, I still think it's a little flat in the center here. So I'd probably bring the crown up even a little more, whether it's uh, Probably in the planisher because we're, we're getting pretty nice here. I don't want to go too crazy. But again, reflection, you can really see 
reflection in it, which is great. So it's coming out pretty nice. So what you can do from here, if you want to get rid of these uh, sander marks, uh, I'm sorry, the, the uh, marks from the shrinker stretcher, um, you can take you can take the sander, and even on aluminum, you could just use like 320. Um, it's just fine. I just use this little palm sander and go over these areas. They'll disappear really quickly. And then you can do the same thing on the top here. Uh, you may want to start with something like 400 even, um, and you can go from there. So that's a quick way. Thing is much stronger now. Um, it's not going to bend on us as easy. Gives it a little bit of shape and a character to it. Makes it look pretty cool. And I mean that's pretty good. I mean if we were doing if we're if this is getting painted, there's not a lot more to do do here. Just maybe a little more planishing to blend some of the shape. But you could put some high build primer on that and and blend it in after we sand out the uh, shrink marks. Be good to go. So any other questions while you were Sure. Oh, wait, One last him. question we can sure. get out there before the end. Um, let's see who it was to make sure. I, uh, so Sound Control has asked if we can see, or if he can see, what the actual uh, hammer looks like up close. Sure. Like the sure. surface of the hammer. So that's something Joe can get in on. Yeah, so Joe's going to get in close here, and I'll, I'll knock this down so you guys can see the, uh, the process, or the, uh, the actual piece close up here. So. This is the, the top here fits in much like you would a, an air chisel. Um, this has a quick release here, which drops down like that. And then underneath, you may actually have to get real low and go up. I think they're looking to see the actual hammer the actual, portion. Yeah, the hammer. So the, the bottom one has a radius to it. The top one is pretty much dead flat. Um, so we'll have to go, let's give them a minute here. We're working with you guys. There you go. So the top one is dead flat there, which is nice. Now it has this little rubber O-ring section on it. That's supposed to help with some of the noise or vibration. I don't know if it's snake oil or not, but it, 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 uh, I think the, the vibration of the noise definitely varies on what you have it bolted to. Um, when we have it on our stand, it probably vibrates a little more than this big heavy workbench. Um, but no matter what, it's going to make a ton of noise. But you can see this is dead flat on there. So when this contacts there. Um, try. It actually, the bottom is rounded, so it's only touching in the center of the piece here. If you want to come up just a little bit more straight on. Let's see. There we go. Great shot. Look at that. Man, this guy must do it for a living. There you go. So you guys can see that the center here touches on them when it's, uh, when it's up and moving. So you're only touching just that center area. That's why it's important to use using these smaller dies is really nice because you can get in a nice tight area there and uh, smooth out any uh, any damage in the metal by doing that. So you want a flat flat top most of the time with a radius bottom is, is kind of the process uh, or the most common combination rather I should say. Any other we got? Not a one we have but I can also offer a quick tech tip. Uh, in the back of the unit you can help deaden the sound you can fill it with things like steel shot, sand, or any dense material. I think we have ours filled with uh, some of our blast media, mm -hmm. some of the aluminum oxide. So there's actually a, uh, a fill hole on the top of if Joe can get zoomed in on it. Matt can point it out in the back where the airline is. Uh, so you can actually fill it to help deaden some of the sound so it's Hold not on. real bad. So there I just figured it would be a, Ready? a nice little quick tech tip. Wow. Right I, there. So there's that little guy there. Um, also our stand also has them in it as well. That's a good point. So that, that's definitely necessary for, uh, for deadening some of the vibration and the, and the sound. So I'll show you guys one more time what we built. And uh, then you guys can go make one yourself. So that's the fender that we built. Uh, anybody that's joining us late, uh, you can see the process. We have uh, the first episode of the live on our YouTube now that you can see this, uh, the first half of the process, and then this one will also be available on YouTube uh, recorded as well. And then we're going to put together a nice uh, recorded version of this um, that's nicely edited and gets rid of some of the excessive planishing.
so you can really see the process in a shorter format. So that's it. That was fun. Uh, so you, hopefully that helps you guys figure out uh, something you can do. You can take this process and use it on any project, small or large. So that same process we did there for that little bike fender, you could do the same thing for doing a large, you know, uh, big car fender, like a car from the 30s or something. Basically the same process, it's just on a greater, larger scale, a lot more hammering, a lot more work, but it can be done uh, with just a handful of tools. So um, thank you guys for watching. Do we have any other questions before I go? No, nope, we're good. Okay, cool. So thank you guys for watching. If you have any ideas for future projects, uh, tools or products that Eastwood sells that you'd like to see us do live in the Eastwood garage, make sure you drop us a line or a comment um, on, our, uh, on our feed here. We read all of them and we will definitely try and do them for you guys. So thanks guys for watching. I'll catch you next week.